Have you ever received a promotion or newsletter in your email inbox? Chances are the company that sent it to you used an email marketing service like iContact to send you and hundreds or thousands of its customers those emails. But what makes iContact unique is that it was started when its founders were still in college, and now their idea has rocketed iContact to over $15 million in sales this year alone. business environment is always changing, and with that change comes opportunities for entrepreneurs. Business success often starts with finding a need and filling it. Entrepreneurs Ryan Alice and Aaron Houghton of iContact wanted to revolutionize email marketing, and in doing so became more successful than they ever imagined. What we saw was that entrepreneurs and small business owners needed an easy way to send out their newsletters. It was simply too complicated for the average business owner to send out an email newsletter to their customers. This allows small businesses to compete with big businesses online and basically use uh, the same type of tools that larger corporations use to promote themselves and to build relationships with their customers. What we wanted to provide was a simple one-stop solution to allow anyone to manage their online marketing and communications. And that's what we did with iContact. Businesses sell products or services to make money or revenue. If the revenue is greater than the cost that business incurs, then the business makes a profit. If the costs are greater than the revenue, the business incurs a loss. Obviously, the goal is to be profitable over time. When we got started, we really didn't have any capital ourselves. I remember I had about $12,000 to my name and it was going down by about $1,000 a month. So in our first year of business, uh, we did about $17,000 in sales over the entire year. So. I knew I had about a year to figure out how to make things work. We had uh, two employees uh, really throughout most of that year, which was Ryan and I. Um, in our second year, we uh, broke $200,000 in revenue. Um, and for the last five years, we've uh, significantly more uh, than doubled the revenue every year. We today are not yet a profitable company. We are growing so fast that we've chosen to go out and raise investment capital so that we can fund that rapid growth so that we can be profitable in the future. In 2007, our revenue was uh, a little bit south of uh, 10 million, um, and we expect to be able to double that number this year, uh, and are still tracking to double that uh, in 2009 as well. Starting a business is one of the best ways to achieve success, but with that success comes risk. Risk is defined as the chance an entrepreneur invests time and money into a business that may not be profitable. Not all businesses are equally successful, but those that take the biggest risks often end up making the most profit. There was very little actually to risk um, because of just the, the lack of kind of resources and net worth we had at the time. But then you could also look at the fact that the product was built for a paying customer, which limited a lot of risk up front. What we calculated was our customer acquisition cost, how much money we had to spend in advertising in order to get a customer to sign up, which was about $300. We calculated the lifetime value of our customer, which was about $2,000. And we figured out that that was a good me metric. We invest 300, we get back 2,000. Ryan knew marketing products. I had built a product to serve um, companies that wanted to market themselves online. I think we felt like we had the domain expertise and a working product and almost nothing to lose. So it was an easy choice. Successful businesses also contribute greatly to the standard of living and quality of life for all. The U.S. has one of the world's highest standards of living, largely because of the wealth created by its businesses. This wealth, along with the freedoms, education, health care, fair tax code, and natural environment we enjoy, leads to a high quality of life. I think we have one of the most friendly uh, climates for business, for small business, and for entrepreneurship in the world. And I've benefited a lot by being an American and being able to have the infrastructure and investments in education in healthcare and technology. This business, Eye Contact, for me is just a way to uh, provide something of value, create jobs here in North Carolina, and be able to gain in leadership ability for the future such that I can uh, be able to make an even bigger difference. Businesses also struggle to meet the needs of their stakeholders in addition to being profitable. Stakeholders can be customers, employees, stockholders, suppliers, the surrounding community, environmentalists, and such. 
For example, profitability is weighed against employees' needs to make more money. Cutting costs may mean not being environmentally friendly. Outsourcing overseas could hurt the local community. The stakeholders that we find very interesting are the community as well, our local community, which we're very involved in. We support a number of charities uh, throughout North Carolina and the world, actually. And then I think there's also the environment. I think we all have to consider what the impact of our business is on the world uh, overall. Uh, a lot of clients that move to us are leaving from things like direct mail uh, and printed media where there's actually ink waste and uh, paper waste. Our clients send about 650 million emails a month um, with their brand name on them uh, through our system. And for the most part, those are pieces of uh, information that uh, would have been in print. Entrepreneurs play a big role in the creation of wealth. There are five factors of production that contribute to wealth, land or natural resources, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, and knowledge. The difference between what makes a rich country rich and a poor country poor is mainly the proliferance of entrepreneurship and the effective use of knowledge. Great ideas uh, are sometimes a dime a dozen, uh, especially in the technology world, and it really comes down to uh, execution and resources. So do you have the time, do you have the money to put behind it, and then do you have the discipline to stay focused on the goal and to actually see it through to completion? The business environment refers to all the factors that affect the development of businesses. There are five elements in the business environment, the economic and legal, technological, competitive, social, and the global business environment. Let's look at each one briefly. The economic and legal environment directly affects the risk of starting a business. If taxes, regulations, and interference with free markets is minimized, businesses have a much better chance of success. The laws in this country uh, I think are set up to allow certain types of resources for entrepreneurs and a certain freedom to um, be focused on any specific thing that, that an entrepreneur might want to pursue. Um, and I think the resources that, uh, that we have available to us here really cause uh, people to succeed in many ways. The technological environment includes the internet and other technologies that allow businesses to operate much more effectively and efficiently than ever before. They can do more with less, which means they are more productive. The internet, computers, information technology have been absolutely critical to our capability to start eye contact and to grow eye contact. Um, and by getting that dot com name and building a business behind it, we're able to uh, kind of get credibility uh, instantly and access across the world. Not only do we have a web based software product, but about 95% of our marketing is done online. So really, without the web, we would not exist as a business today. The competitive environment is greater than ever. Customers want more and more, and exceeding those expectations is how businesses compete to win. Businesses must be nimble, able to restructure quickly, and empower their employees and managers to make decisions that enable them to beat the competition. We empower our employees and our team members to achieve their goals and their dreams and allow them to work hard. We tend to avoid micromanagement. We tend to hire smart people, train them, and then we let them go, let them free to achieve uh, within their own uh, organization, within their own departments. Managing diversity means more than hiring minorities and women. Age, sexual preference, religion, marital status, disabilities, and cultural differences are all issues in the social environment that businesses must deal with sensitively, not only with employees, but also with customers. Having people from different backgrounds, uh, with different skill sets and experiences, is important to making sure that we understand um, how our product affects our customers, which come from uh, just as diverse of a background as we hope to have uh, people on our team here. The last element is the global environment. Globalization and world trade have exploded because better distribution and communication systems have made the world a much smaller place. But other adverse factors such as war, terrorism, and global warming can also have a big impact on how businesses operate in the future. Being an online company from the beginning, about 20% of our sales have been international without any special marketing to different countries, without any special support for those countries. Just having an online product in English allows you to get another nice additional percentage of the globe uh, able to use the product in, uh, in a very seamless fashion. So we've learned that there are many factors that affect the business environment. 
We've also learned that entrepreneurs like Ryan Alice and Aaron Houghton are free to pursue their dreams if they are determined enough. The success of new businesses like Eye Contact is a result of the evolution of businesses in the United States. What the future holds in store is nothing short of amazing. The question is, what will your part in that future be? If you had a vision and you communicated that vision, if you respected people, people would follow you. People would be part of your family, part of your team. I wish there was a simple answer to how you get from a couple of guys living in an office and um, you know sleeping on a futon and eating on a George Foreman grill to uh, a multi-million dollar company with uh, 100 plus employees. If you can be happy, make money, help others all at the same time, that's really when you'll achieve your, def your definition of success.